In today's video, we'll check out a cool device called the UboPod. It's a fully open source, developer ready device designed to turn your AI ideas into a real, interactive experience using various single board computers, including the Pi 4, Pi 5, and the Ubo Compute NVIDIA Jetson Nano Orin. Build apps with just a few lines of Python or self host powerful tools in your home lab from custom assistance to automation and more. In this video, we'll unbox it, assemble it, and discuss some of the software capabilities. I'm John, and welcome to Wagner's Tech Talk. When you receive your UboPod, it'll come in a box like this. I love the Gopher coding logo, I think that's pretty cool. The developer also included a nice note letting me know that he's provided the software on microSD and pre-installed on an included NVMe drive, which is great. He also mentions that the UboPod is 100% open source, both the hardware schematics and designs, as well as the software being available on GitHub. Included in this package was a flat Ethernet cable, a 32 gigabyte micro SD card with the software pre-installed, the Ubo Pod itself, which has some additional components inside, which we'll take a look at in a moment, and a power supply that is 5 volts, 3000 milliamps. And here's a quick look at the kit. The top cover is held down by two connectors. Just pull gently, straight up, and it should come off easily. There's a hardware pack with a few plastic screws for the I.O. board, metal screws for the Pi, and a tiny Phillips head screwdriver, a Pi 5 active cooler, and here's a quick look at the internal boards. On the bottom of the case, there is a plastic cover that provides easy access to the NVMe drive. Now that we've seen what's included, let's move on to the assembly. To complete the setup, you will need a Raspberry Pi 5, or there is an add-on option for using it with an NVIDIA Jetson Nano Orin but I'll be using a Pi 5 with 4 gigabytes of RAM. To start, we'll remove the two plastic screws holding in the I.O. board. This board has a long flat cable that will connect to the Pi 5's micro SD slot, and the opposite end is a bit delicate, so be sure and handle it with care. We'll gently attach the I.O. board to the connectors on the Pi 5, slightly wiggle them to make sure they are fully seated. Then attach the wider end of the flat cable into the micro SD slot on the bottom of the Pi. Double check that the smaller end is still attached. If there's a plastic cover over the fan port on the Pi 5, go ahead and remove that. Now take the cable from the active cooler and make sure the yellow wire is facing the outside of the Pi and firmly press it down into the port. Then remove the backing to the thermal pads. Align the active cooler over the holes on the Pi and press in on both of the two pegs to secure the active cooler to the Pi. Next, we'll remove the Pi camera. The one installed here is a 5 megapixel camera that has a maximum still picture resolution of 2592 by 1944 pixels and a video resolution of 1080p at 30 frames per second. On the front is a camera cover for full privacy when you want it. We will need to remove the camera to install the main board assembly. Just slightly raise up and it comes out. These small camera brackets are easy to put back in if they do come out. Just slide it into the slot at the bottom. Now slightly bend the speaker wires towards the outside of the case. Take the main board assembly and bring it in at an angle to fit into the cutouts on the back of the UBO. The PCIe flat cable at the back is a bit short. You can use tweezers to bring it up towards the back, or perhaps even tape it to the back of the case. Then make sure all the holes are lined up. Make a bend in the PCIe cable by pushing it against the back of the housing. Then pull up on the black tab going to the PCIe port on the Pi. I found it easier to use tweezers to guide the PCIe cable into the port. Then press down on the cable into the port and lock it into place by pressing down on the black tab on the connector. Give it a slight tug to make sure it's fully seated. Next we'll plug in both speaker wires. 
The right speaker wire plugs into the port nearest the HDMI port. The left speaker plugs into the port nearest the internal USB port. Give both a good press down to make sure that they are fully seated. Now reinsert the camera into the brackets. The flat cable will be facing upward. Then press it towards the back and it snaps into place. Raise up on the black tab going to the rear camera port on the Pi. Insert the flat cable. Then press down on the black tabs to lock it into place. Give it a slight tug just to make sure it's fully seated. Next we'll take the hardware pack and install the screws. The metal screws go into the Pi and the plastic screws into the I.O. board. These are the five locations where we'll install the plastic screws. I recommend first starting each of them a bit loosely and tighten all five of them down once fully inserted. It would be ideal if these were metal screws so you could use a magnetized Phillips head screwdriver but the only area that was a little tricky was the small area between the USB-C port and the speaker. Now that all the plastic screws have been started, go back over them and tighten the I.O. board down all the way. Next we'll install four of the small silver screws into the four locations on the Pi 5. I prefer to start on two diagonal ends, then install all four and tighten them all the way down. In the hardware pack is this small light pipe. It's easy to miss, so be on the lookout for it. Insert it into the small hole to the left of the camera. This operates as a power button and LED indicator if the UBO is powered on or off. On the back, you have the USB-C power port and a second power button, the micro SD slot and a data port, two full-size HDMI ports, and of course the Pi's Ethernet port, two USB 3.0 ports, and two USB 2.0 ports. Now route the speaker wires over the back ports. Lower the top panel over the two sets of pins. Be careful lining up the cover over the pins. You can't see them very well during installation, so get a good feel for where they are. Once lined up, push the top cover into the pins, and that completes the assembly process. In the next segment, we'll discuss the software. Now we're ready to power up the UboPod and check out the software. If you'll be using the micro SD, go ahead and insert it now. Then plug in the USB-C power, and the unit should begin to boot. The LED will turn green on the front. The software for the UboPod is currently being developed and enhanced. We'll cover it in much more detail in part two of this series. However, the current software is already quite mature, extensible, using containers, and very easy to use. You press a corresponding button on the left to select an option, Press the back arrow to go back, the home button to return to the home menu, and up and down to either adjust the volume or scroll up and down a list. The first thing we'll do is set up our Wi-Fi network. To do that, navigate to settings, then network, select Wi-Fi, and you can use the camera or the web dashboard to connect. We'll take a look at the web dashboard in a moment, but let's use the camera input. When I select camera, it's looking to the front camera for the Wi-Fi setup QR code. On an Android device, you can just go into settings, select connections, then your Wi-Fi network, and at the very bottom, you'll see QR code. Just tap that. And on the Ubo, make sure that the camera cover is open. Point the QR code at the camera, and that's it. It's super easy to set up. If I press the select option, we can see that my Wi-Fi network of Lucas has been assigned and I can disconnect or delete if I ever need to. I can also go back in, select IP addresses, and view my local IP addresses that were assigned by the UBO. Within the apps option, there are several Docker apps that can be added to the UBO pod, including Home Assistant, Home Bridge, Ingrok, and, a matter of fact, installing an image is super easy. Just select the option, for example, in Grok, then Fetch to download the Docker container. The image will then be downloaded and installed, and then you can start, stop, or configure the container from the web UI. For example, from a web browser on your network, 
Go to this URL and you can configure the container such as entering the ingrok auth token. There are additional containers available such as Alama, Open Web UI, Pihole, Portainer, Image, and the file system. From the main menu, you can select the About option and see what the current version of software is and make sure it's updated. Of course, you can fully control the UboPod directly or from the web app at any time. You also have remote access via SSH, and if you want to use Raspberry Pi Connect, you can install that also and easily remote connect to the device from anywhere for even more advanced control and setup. Another key feature within settings is the assistant feature. This allows you to fully customize how your home assistant will function. There are a number of ways you can initiate the listening, either via an IR remote, pressing and holding the home button on the UBO, and there's a new option being added to listen for a wake word, which will be available soon. You can customize everything from the speech recognition engine, the language model, the voice used for speech synthesis, and an image generator allowing you full control over how your assistant will operate on your network. Here's a quick example. I'll just use the press and hold method to demonstrate. Tell me a joke. Why did the computer go to therapy? Because it had too many bytes. What LLM are we using? We are using a version of OpenAI's GPT language model for our conversation. What do you know about the YouTube channel Wagner's Tech Talk? Wagner's Tech Talk is a YouTube channel that provides tutorials, reviews, and advice on a variety of tech topics, including smart home gadgets, software, and general tech tips. It aims to help viewers understand and utilize technology effectively. The Kickstarter for the UboPod has been fully funded as of November 7th, 2025. However, at the time of this recording, you can still order one. The price will depend on the model and type of single board computer you want to use. I'll place links in the description below if you want to learn more. And if you enjoyed this video or found it helpful, please let me know by clicking the like button. We'll do something a little different today. I'll let the Ubo pod in this video. Take it away, Ubo. Please check out the links below for more information on the Ubo pod. Thank you so much for watching, and I look forward to talking with you again very soon.